Hi Flashes, today we are going to be talking about solving two-step equations. So on Friday last week we talked about solving one-step and two-step equations. Uh, today we are going to be reviewing solving two-step equations but with word problems. So we are going to be defining a variable, setting up an equation, and solving. So let's look at the first one here. So a CD club is selling CDs for $7.50 each. The charge for shipping is $5. How many CDs can you purchase with $50? So the first thing that we have to do is what we call define a variable. So whenever we say define a variable, we just want you guys to tell us what does your variable equal. So what is your variable representing in the story problem? So in other words, your variable is always going to be whatever you're trying to find in the problem. So here, we are trying to figure out how many CDs can we purchase with $50. So X is going to equal the number of CDs. So that's what X is representing in this story problem, okay? Then we need to go and start setting up our two-step equation. So I always tell my students the easiest thing to find first is the total. And we know that our total is going to be our equal number. So based on our information, CDs are $7.50 each, shipping was $5, and we're trying to figure out how much we can purchase with $50. So this $50 is representing our total. So that's going to be the number after the equal sign. After you figure out what the total is, I then tell my students to look for what number will be attached with the variable. Because if we know that our variable is talking about the number of CDs, we also need the number that is also talking about CDs. So in this case, it says that CDs are $7.50 each and the shipping is $5. Well, this $5 means nothing to the amount of CDs. However, the cost of the CDs do, so we know that the variable will be attached to the 750. And then you just have to figure out what to do with your last number. So shipping is just an extra charge, so all that you're going to do is just add that 5 onto there. Okay. Okay, so remember after you uh, set up your two-step equation, you can now go ahead and start solving it. Please remember you guys must show proper algebraic steps. There's no other way to do this. So please make sure that your guys' work looks just like mine, okay? Uh, so reviewing what we did on Friday, remember with the two-step equation, oh, I forgot to put an X there. Um, reviewing two-step equations, you always have to move the number that's adding or subtracting first. That's on the same side as X. So in this case, we need to remove that plus 5. So the opposite of adding 5 is subtracting 5. So once you subtract 5 on both sides, your plus 5 minus 5 will cancel. minus 5 will cancel, so you're just going to cancel those out. You are going to be left with 750x equals, and then 50 minus 5, 750x, and then 50 minus 5 is 45. And then the last thing that you need to do, remember we're still trying to get x by itself, so we have to do inverse operations. So here the 750 and the x are multiplying, so the opposite of multiplying is dividing. Please remember we are using the fraction bar to show division. So you're going to divide by 750 on both sides, and you guys can use a calculator. So if you were to take 45 divided by 750, let me get my calculator out. 45 divided by 750, we get 6. And remember, these are story problems, so we do need to label. So since X was talking about the number of CDs, our answer is 6 CDs. All right, so that is defining the variable. Then you're setting up your equation, and then you're showing your proper algebraic steps to get to your final answer. So let's try the next one. So you are at a book sale where all paperback books are $3 each. You have $25, but you need $2 to ride the bus home. How many paperback books can you buy at the bookstore? So same thing, first thing we need to do is define our variable. So what is our variable representing in this story problem? 
and it is representing the number of paperback books. So x equals number of paperback books. Okay, so now, okay, so now we are going to start setting up our equation. So again, the easiest number to find is the total. So let's go ahead and figure out what our total is. Um, so it says paperbacks books are three dollars each. That's not the total. You have twenty-five dollars. So right there is our total. Then go ahead and find the number that the variable will be attached with. So since our variable is talking about the number of paperback books, we need the cost per book. And it says right here that the cost of them were $3 each. So our variable is going to be attached with that $3. And then uh, we still need $2 to ride the bus home. So that's an extra $2 that we have to account for. So we're just going to add the two onto however many books that we purchase, okay? All right, so after you set up your equation, you can go ahead and start solving it. So same thing, always move the number on the same side as x, but not attached to it. So that would be our constant. And our constant here is just the two. Again, to move it, you have to use inverse operations. So the opposite of adding two would be to subtract two. And let's see what happens. So your plus two minus two will cancel. All that you have left is the three X. So you're just gonna bring it down. And then 25 minus two gives us 23. And then last step to get X by itself is to divide by that three on both sides. And notice what happens. So if we were to take 23 divided by three, we get 7.6 repeating. However, that is not our answer because is it possible to have 7.6 repeating number of paperback books? No, it's not. So what we have to do is we're going to have to round, okay? And a lot of students will see this and they're like, oh, so 7.6, we're just gonna round it up to eight, okay? However, watch what happens whenever I plug eight back in for X to my equation to see if I have enough money to buy these paperback books. So let me use a different color here. So if I were to plug eight, so let's say we rounded 7.67 up to eight, if I were to plug eight in for X and resolve my equation, three times eight is 24, and then 24 plus two is 26. So 26 is greater than the $25 that we had, correct? So if we only have $25 and we were to purchase eight books, we don't have enough money to do that. So that's why you have to be careful with your rounding because yes, if I told you guys to round 7.67 to the nearest. So yes, if I told you guys to round 7.67 to the nearest whole number, you guys would tell me eight. However, whenever it deals with story problems, sometimes it doesn't work because in this situation, if we uh, bought eight paperback books, we would If we bought eight paperback books, we wouldn't have enough money um, to either buy the books or to ride the bus back home, okay? So if you can't round up, that means that you have to round down. So our actual answer is going to be seven books. So let's move on to the next one. So the total cost of repairing a car is the sum of the amount paid for the parts and the amount paid for labor. You paid $86 for parts and $37 for each hour of labor. The total cost to repair the car was $234. How many hours did it take to repair the car? Okay, so same thing, define your variables. So what is your variable representing in this problem? And as you guys can see, we are trying to figure out the number of hours. So X is gonna equal number of hours. 
And then we can go ahead and start setting up our two-step equation. So same thing, always find the total first because the total is the easiest to find. Um, so here it says you paid $86 for parts and $37 for each hour of labor. So those aren't the total. Um, right here it says the total cost was $234. So the $234 is the total. Then go ahead and find what number does the variable attach with. So if our variable is talking about the number of hours, we need the cost per hour. So here it says that it was $37 for each hour of, lab of labor. So we know for sure that that 37 is going to be attached to the X. And then the additional $86 for parts is just extra that was added on. Okay, so we now have our, our two-step equation, so let's go ahead and solve. Again, you always want to move the constant first, that's on the same side as x, over to the other side. And to do that, you have to do the inverse operation of adding. So the inverse operation of adding is subtracting. So when you subtract 86 on both sides, your 86 will cancel over here. You're left with 37x equals, and then 234 minus 86 is 148. And then our last step to get x by itself, since 37 and x are multiplying, the opposite of multiplying is dividing. So 148 divided by 37 gives us 4 hours of labor. Okay, so I'm going to do a couple more with you guys and then I'll have you guys try some on your own. Again, I'm going to reiterate that your guys' work should look exactly like mine. You should have rows of your steps. So notice how you start with the equation, you do a step, you get a result, and then you do another step before you get your answer. So everything should be in a line. Okay, you're showing steps on both sides. You're showing the operations. Again, I'm just stressing that to you guys um, because that's how you will do it for the rest of your life with math. Okay. All right, next one's a little tricky. So let's see if we can figure this one out. So your family's taking a long distance car trip. You begin with 13 gallons of gas in the fuel tank. Your car uses four gallons of gas per hour of driving. You will stop to refuel when there is exactly one gallon of gas remaining in the tank. After how many hours will you need to stop to refuel? All right, so let's figure this one out. So first thing we need to do is figure out what our variable equals. So here again, we're trying to figure out the number of hours. And then we need to go ahead and start setting up our equation. So we need to figure out what our equal sign is going to be. So it says that you begin with 13 and then your car uses four gallons of gas per hour. And then you will stop to refill when there's exactly one gallon of gas remaining. So in this situation, our one gallon of gas is going to be our total because that will be what's left. Or in other words, when we will stop to uh, fill up our gas tank. So the one gallon of gas is our remaining, so that would be our total. Now, before we start setting up the rest of the equation, let's first figure out where our variable is going to go. So if our variable is talking about the number of hours, uh, we need the gallons per hour. So here it says that there, we started with 13 and then our car uses 4 gallons of gas. So we know for sure that our x will be attached to this 4. But watch how I'm going to set up this equation and then I will explain why I set it up this way, okay? So if they tell you that you begin with that 13 gallons of gas, that means that that 13 is where you started at, okay? So that 13 gallons of gas is where you started. Then if your car uses four gallons of gas per hour, that means that you're losing your gas. your gas. So if you're losing gas, that does not mean that you should be adding 4x here 
because that means that you're gaining gas as you're driving, which does not make any sense, right? The more you drive, the less gas that you're going to have. So instead of adding 4x, you would just subtract the 4x. So this is one of those situations where it's going to be a little different about how you set up your equation. Um, because in this type of situations, you would do the total within your equation minus the using is what we say. So how much they use for their gas. And then it's going to equal what's left. Okay, so this is just one of those uh, different types of situations where your total would actually be in the equation itself, not at, after the equal sign, okay? All right, so this is how you would set it up. So let's go ahead and solve it. So I'm going to rewrite my equation over here. And then let's go ahead and start solving it. So first thing, again, you always want to move the constant that's on the same side as x, but not attached to it. So in this case, I want to move the 13. This is a positive 13, so technically I could put a plus sign in front of that 13. So the opposite of adding 13 would be subtracting. So your plus 13 minus 13 cancel. Please remember, when you bring down this 4x, there is a minus sign in front of the 4x. So technically, this 4x is negative. So when you bring that 4x down, you also have to bring down that minus sign with it to make the 4x a negative. You also have to bring down the negative with the 4x because it is a negative 4x. Okay. Then if you were to take 1 minus 13, that gives you negative 12. And then your last step to get x by itself is to divide by that negative 4 on both sides. And x is going to equal 3 hours. Okay. So that is your answer. All right. Uh, last one before I have you guys try the backside. So a group of seven friends take a canoe trip. The total price of the trip before any discounts is $750. Each person in the group receives a student discount. The total price with the discount is $694. How much is the discount per person? Okay, so again, this is one of those other situations that is similar to number four here. Um, so in this case, um, let's first set up our variable. So x is going to equal uh, the discount per person. Okay, so that's what we're trying to find. So x is going to be discount per person. And then let's go ahead and start setting up our equation. So same thing, try to find out what your total would be. So we have a group of seven friends. That's not the total. The total price of the trip before discounts was $750. So that isn't the end total. The end total with the discount was $694. So we know for sure that that $694 is going to be the amount at the end. Then remember, thinking of like a discount. With a discount, are we adding money or are we losing money to the original amount? So hopefully you guys said discounts were losing money, right? So this goes back to what we had to do up here with number four, just like using gallons of gas. Since we are using gas and we are driving, as you're driving, you are losing gas. So that's why we had to put our number with the variable after a subtraction symbol because you're losing it. So same thing with a discount, since you are losing money, or not, I guess not losing money, and you're saving money, that means that you are reducing money from the original cost. So again, in this situation, whatever number your variable is attached to, you have to put it after the minus sign since we are talking about a discount. So let's first figure out um, what number will be attached to the variable. So since our variable is talking about the discount per person, we need to figure out how many people were on this trip. And it says right here that a group of seven friends took the canoe trip. So the X is going to be attached to the seven. 
and then it is going to be after that minus sign because again it's a discount we are taking away money from the total price and then our last number is that total price at the beginning which was 750 okay and again guys this makes sense so you started with 750 then you're subtracting the discount per seven friends and then it ended up being 694 for the total okay so here's our equation let's go ahead and solve it so first thing I need to move is this 750 so again since it's a positive 750 the opposite of a positive is a negative or in other words the opposite of adding is subtracting we are going to be left with again here's that minus sign before the 7x so make sure you bring down that entire thing because that 7 is negative so negative 7x equals and then 694 is negative 56 sorry guys I know my video keeps pausing and then the last thing to do to get x by itself is to divide by that negative 7 on both sides and we are going to get x equals eight dollars I want you guys to pause the video and I want you guys to try let's see I'm looking at the back side here uh, these ones are all uh, the normal ones like you guys have seen um, so I want you guys to try to do um, let's say three of them so pick any three if you want the extra review then do all of them uh, but just pick three of them try them out on your own and then when you guys are done press play and then I will show you guys the answers okay so you guys should be done with hopefully three of them now um, so I'm just going to quickly review what you guys should have got as your answer um, so for the first one uh, you're trying to figure out the number of months so that's why x equal number of months uh, your total was the 68 volunteers so how many months will there be with 68 volunteers so that was your total um, then it said that your volunteers increased by eight people each month so that's why the eight was attached with the x and then it said that uh, you already had 12 people. So you could have had 8x plus 12 or 12 plus 8x, that's the same thing, equals 68. So after you solved it, you should have gotten seven months. So you subtracted 12, divided by eight, and you got x equals seven. So after seven months, it'll be 68 volunteers. Uh, number seven, if you guys did number seven, um, it said a group of five friends playing golf, the total was 97 and then you guys had a uh, coupon of 67 so there's a couple different ways that you guys could have done this uh, this was probably the way that I would have done it because this is what I showed you guys on the back side um, so your 67 would be your total after the discount it started with 97 and then your group of five friends would be subtracting that 5x because you were saving uh, the price of coupon per person so this was similar to number five on the back side uh, but you got uh, an answer of six dollars per person uh, here's another way that you guys could have set it up um, and this way you could have done it on number four and number five on the back side as well um, so you have the sixty dollars plus your five friends and then it equal the total um, and notice how you still get the same answer no matter what okay so uh, with these type of problems the special case ones where you are having like a discount or you're driving and you're subtracting anything that has to do with subtracting there are a couple different ways to solve them okay all right uh, here is number eight so you had to figure out the weight of one car um, it said that the total was 4,725 tons there were 50 cars and um, the locomotive weighed 125 so here is your setup after you solved it and I forgot to label um, it was 92 tons for the weight of one car
Again, you guys can pause the video if you need extra time to write these down, but I'm going to go ahead and show you guys 9 and 10 just in case you guys did all of them. Um, so what you're trying to figure out here, number 9, was the monthly payments. Um, so the motorcycle was 2300 so that was your total. You wanted to make $200 monthly payments, so that was 200 x plus your down payment of 1100 So after you use your proper algebraic steps to solve, you should have got six monthly payments. All right, and the last one, number 10. So you wanted to figure out the number of people attending the party. And it says that the family has $600 to spend, so that was your total. Uh, the cost of food for each person was 18x, so that's where you're going to figure out how many people could attend the party. And then you had that additional 150 fee. So again, after you set up your equation and you solved it, you should have gotten 25 people can attend the party. All right, so hopefully you guys did okay. Um, if you guys have any questions, please let me or your teacher know. And uh, that is it on solving two-step equations with word problems. So again, let me know if you guys have any questions.